Tommy's gonna taste the gin so that you don't have to Let you save your money, yeah, that's what Tommy wants Minimal dilution, cause we wanna taste the gins But if the gins are bad, then we will throw them in the bin Now let's head it over to Tommy, who is gonna taste? He's gonna get on rowdy and shout up the place G'day, and welcome back to Tommy Tastes, the channel where I taste the gin so that you don't have to. Stop wasting your hard-earned cash on sh** gin. Let's crack on and taste. Hey bro, gin me that stapler, dude. Today, it's the big one. It is da -da 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 -da, Tanqueray number 10. But not only is it Tanqueray number 10, no. In order to give you a really good idea of exactly what Tanqueray 10 is, we're going to put it against the original Tanqueray. This is the unchanged recipe from 1830. This is the more craft style of gin that they introduced to the market in 2000. Nowadays, this seems kind of normal. Back in 2000, I think this would have been mind blowing. Nothing like this had ever been done. Craft gin as you and I know it was not a thing. Let's crack on, talk a little more about what makes Tanqueray so special. Tom and Tanqueray sitting in a tree. G-I-N-N-I-N-G. So Tanqueray is probably the first gin I've reviewed on this channel, which is kind of what we describe as more of like a mainstream gin. Mainstream gin has got a bit of a kind of dirty name in the last 10 years since the craft gin revolution came about but I thought it might be fun to give you some one noise reviews of the other mainstream gins that are out there. So we'll start with Gordon's. <laughs> Bombay Sapphire. <sighs> Beef Eater Gin. Oh, really? Okay, Beef Eater will admit had a word, but when I see this, it doesn't matter where I go. Good restaurant, bad restaurant. Good pub, bad pub. Mate's house that doesn't know anything about gin. This is such a winning formula, and this is a timeless classic. There's nothing particularly interesting in it that set the world alight. The access they had to say citrus botanicals in 1830 isn't what it is today. So it's a relatively simplistic gin. The exact recipe of botanicals is still a secret and a secret that dates back to its inception in 1830. All we know, juniper, coriander, angelica root, which is kind of like a fixative, near enough every gin has it. And if a gin is not having it, then it's going to be strange and licorice root, which is more to kind of round off the gin and bring around some sweetness. So there's nothing really out of the ordinary there. But then there's obviously a couple more things that are a little bit secret. I'm gonna guess a little bit of citrus peel, maybe some black pepper, maybe, I don't know, some kind of flour. But maybe we'll get a bit more when we get round to tasting this eventually. Tanqueray number 10, as I said, dates back to 2000. The bottle shape that we get now, I believe was introduced in 2014. And I think, despite the fact that you can pick this gin up for about 25 pounds, it has to be one of the most stunning bottles that there is. It's this great octagonal shape. It has a wonderful kind of art deco-like feel about it. And I just think it is marvelous. The color green, the lovely kind of metal cap that it has on it, all just looks great and it's so in keeping with the Tanqueray brand. Love this. So the main difference between Tanqueray number 10 and the Tanqueray original 
has to be that this was designed more with a modern contemporary feel. It has all of the classic botanicals that the original Tanqueray has, but it also does some very interesting things, like an addition of chamomile flowers, for example. But this is still not out of the question or realm of possibilities of what gins have had. There's nothing crazy about this. But what it does that's very interesting, and I haven't seen other distilleries do, is actually use whole citrus fruits in the distillation process. Normally it's just dried peel or something along those lines, but here we're talking whole citrus fruits. So whole grapefruit, orange, and lime that goes into this gin. In order to not have it overwhelming, the botanicals are distilled in a certain way, and then the whole citrus is distilled in a completely different still, which is then blended into the Tanqueray number no. 10. Tanqueray number no. 10 takes its name from the original still that it was made in, which is known as Tiny 10. Yes, you did hear correctly. The name of the gin has nothing to do with the number of botanicals that goes into it. Believe it or not, the Tanqueray number no. 10 has a mere eight botanicals in it. The name purely relates to that Tiny 10 still. Crazy, eh? And there's a quite an interesting story behind it, whereby the entire distillery of both Tanqueray and Gordons during World War II was relocated from London to Scotland because they were afraid that without gin, Britain as we know it would collapse. Not that there was the uprising of a nasty fascist dictatorship sweeping across Europe. No, no, no. Gin was what took precedence in a war-torn UK. So it was deemed much safer in Scotland and it's where it stands even now. And in 1941, they were right to do so because there was a massive bombing that took out most of the factory. But thankfully, that tiny 10 still survived and made this bad boy here. God save our gracious queen. Another key difference that you should be aware of going in to taste these gins is the ABV. Now, the Tanqueray number no. 10 was made for a cocktail market. It was made to withstand martinis. And for that, you need a big, bold, strong gin. So this comes in at 47.3% which is a great amount of alcohol for me. The regular Tanqueray, this is deemed their export strength one, but export strength means different things in different markets. Now, annoyingly, I've got the slightly limp-wristed UK version here, which clocks in at a disappointing 43.1%. Although, to be honest, 43%, there is nothing limp about that. However, in most of Europe, the export strength is the same as this bad boy. You get an extra 4.2% at 47.3% in the standard Tanqueray. And it's dirt cheap. You can pick this up for £15 in the UK and about €18 Euros in Europe. Why you would choose not to buy Tanqueray over Gordon's, Bombay or Beefeater truly perplexes me. Enough of my shit talking, let's crack on and taste! It's tasting, it's tasting time! So I know what you're thinking already, where's your Ponzi whiskey glass gone? Well, little bit of a problem, I've only got one of them. So when comparing, I think it's really important to have two of the same glasses. So I've gone for a classic kind of bourbon tumbler here, which won't bring out the best in the gin, but simultaneously won't bring out the worst, and it means that I won't compare them incorrectly on basis of the glass. But let's get our nose in there and have a real good sniff of Tanqueray. This week I have mostly been getting drunk. So the Tanqueray is really a classic gin. There's no other way of putting that. Juniper heavy, little bit of citrus, little bit of spice, but nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. It feels a little alcoholic, but it's is alcoholic. It's 43.1%. Of course you're going to smell alcohol. And with a glass like this, it's pretty normal for the alcohol to really show. Let's crack on and taste. Drink arse girls. Wow, wow, wow. This gin is stunning. It's been a while since I've gone back to the original Tanqueray, mainly because when Tanqueray number 10, when Tanqueray rang Pura around, 
you kind of forget that this exists. But it's so good, it's so fresh, the clarity is beautiful, the citrus instantly jumps out to you, but it's good, bold, spicy, juniper led. It's f***ing great, really. Let's get some ice in there, let's have a taste. <laughs> yes, this is how I like to drink it with the lad when I get nice and lashed up, you know. This is a gin that reminds me just how good gin is because it's so cheap, it's so mass produced, and in 2016, this took over Beef Eater as the number one selling gin in the world. And you can totally understand why, because it is so full, the dilution from the ice just brings out the citrus, it is marvelous. Let's get some water in there and see what we're working with there. Splash of water, here we go. We like to drink with Tommy, because Tommy is all right. Uh, when we drink with Tommy, he gets it down in 8765432. Now this is where that ABV really comes into play. The gin is good and strong and cuts through the dilution perfectly. You could use this in a cocktail, no problem whatsoever. If you diluted the same amount I did there, which was probably a one for one with Gordon's, with beef eater, with sh like Bombay Sapphire, you would not taste the gin. You would taste a grain spirit and it would be muddled and unpleasant. This, you are still getting that classic tanqueray through there. Woof, woof. Ho ho, let the gin see the gin. Now it's time for the big boy. Tanqueray number 10, the big brother, the big beast. This is the only gin that has ever been inducted into the San Francisco Spirits Hall of Fame. Now, San Francisco is basically the huge competition when it comes to spirits. So winning an award there is incredible. If you get inducted into the Hall of Fame, imagine what it does for your brand. Is it right to be in that Hall of Fame? Let's have a taste and see. I tell you what, that gin is bloody Moorish. Now this gin's actually a little more reserved on the nose than the Tanqueray, which is crazy when you consider there's an extra four or so percent of alcohol in there. What you get is that beautiful juniper, citrus, the grapefruit really stands out, and they recommend that you chuck a wedge of grapefruit in this. Don't bother with that shit. Honestly, there is tons of grapefruit in here. If you're dropping grapefruit in here, basically you may as well just get a grapefruit juice. And who wants that bitter shit in your mouth? If you're gonna do that, why not try just sucking off So let's just move away from that slightly graphic sexual imagery and focus on the gin again. Let's taste. Oh uh, boys, looks like this ledge is just about to chunder everywhere. It is so bold. There is so much power, but it uses it so well. It is spicy, junipery, but the citrus really comes through. My mouth is going crazy with this citrus tang and attack from all angles. It is f***ing great. And I think I might use the word fuck too much, but I like to be graphic in just how much I like gin. So f***ing drink this. Ugh, the chunklets are just leaping out of the volcano. You've probably heard me talk about Tanqueray number 10 on this channel so many times, and that's because I deem it to be one of the best value, highest quality gins that you can get. And adding ice to this gin is exactly why I think that's the case. That minor dilution sets the whole thing alight. It is so citrusy, so unbelievably sour, yet has a nice round sweetness. It's floral, it's punchy, and it's just divine. Let's crack a bit of water in there and see exactly what we make of a diluted version. Down it, fresher! Confession time. I think this gin might be better with some dilution. Whoa, 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 whoa! What's going on here? Honestly, this does not happen very often. I'm a great believer, despite how I say we should taste gin neat, that gin is better with minor dilution. But as I've explained so many times, I deem minor dilution to be a splash of water, a splash of non-flavored tonic, or just a lot of ice and the ice gradually melting down and diluting that gin. The citrus is now even more apparent. The grapefruit is beautiful and sweet. Why you need more grapefruit in this, I don't know. Don't drop a wedge of anything in this. If you're gonna put something in this, just make sure that it's more ice so that you can retain the lovely 
cool flavor of it for longer. It is so, so good. Okay, this is getting tiring. No one cares. Get to the point. Hurry up. So I'm feeling like I'm getting a good workout here, which is kind of good because if you know me, you'd know that my idea of working out is kind of staring at a kettle and hoping that something happens. These gins are incredible. Now, like we said, we've got about 15 pounds, 25 to 30 pounds. Is it worth spending the extra money on that Tanqueray number 10? I'd leave the choice firmly in your hands for that. You are working with two different styles of gin. Here you have the classic. It doesn't go much beyond classic, but it does classic superbly. Here you have more of a contemporary feel to classic and more citrus at play and just beautiful, powerful aromas. Certainly if you're looking to make cocktails, it's the 10 where you want to be. But as we've said, cocktails, it's bloody nonsense. It's juice for adults. Don't bother with that shit, unless we're talking martini. And this was made expressly for the purpose of making that martini. So don't bother doing anything else. Don't make a pink grapefruit gin fizz or elderflower tea gin or anything that's got smoke coming out of it. If you're doing that, you literally don't care about life and just go and live in a hole. Which would I buy? I'd buy both. This one is a cellar defender. This is for when you get someone round who wants their gin with pink lemonade. And what you're gonna offer them is such a quality product. But if I saw someone putting pink lemonade in this, I'd gouge their fucking eyes out. Chazza tea, you complete me. What? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like, like and subscribe. What? Oh, oh, like and subscribe. What, what? Oh, like and subscribe. Like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like, 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 what, what? Boom, 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 boom